Hello folks, Roger Daniel here for the Magnificent World of Toys. If I'd stop collecting today, I'd say I'd still be a fairly happy man. Yet, I'm sure occasionally I'll get that mild anxiety thinking of the ones that got away. The toys, that is. We all have our wish list, and for many of us, this is about the pursuit of one thing or the other. As I begin to run out of space and begin to focus my finances on other things, let me share with you my wish list or the toys that will likely get away. This is my list starting from least to favorite, and maybe I'll throw in some honorable mentions towards the end. So number 10, Centurion's Jake Rockwell. Having picked up the other two at PowerCon a few years ago, I'd like to have the trio of Centurions. I only have Jake Rockwell in loose form and I definitely love to find him complete or at least find a helmet and one of the expansion sets to furnish and finish him. Number 9. The Robotech Tactical Battle Pod. I loved Robotech as a child. It was a little dark for my taste, but I was always fascinated by the characters, vehicles, and mecha from the show. Although I'd really settled pretty much for any Robotech toy, none fascinates me more than the Tactical Battle Pod. It's just amazing. I really love the design and size of this piece. Prices on this bad boy have skyrocketed, so my hopes of ever obtaining one of these have began to dim. Number eight, the Texas Tornado. One of my all-time favorite wrestlers was the late, great Kerry Von Erich also known as the Texas Tornado. As I'm currently collecting wrestlers from my childhood, he would be an awesome addition. Hell, I wouldn't mind having any of the other Von Eric brothers as well because I really love those brothers and those wrestlers. So we'll see how that turns out. Number seven, Ali Viper from G.I. Joe. I've possessed this figure twice in my lifetime, once as a child and later as an adult. Ali Viper is perhaps my second all-time favorite G.I. Joe figure, my first being Shockwave. I'm really hoping to someday find one complete and at a good price. I'd say of everything else on this list, this is one that's most likely to happen as prices vary on these from what I've seen. It's just a matter of getting it from the right person to tell you the truth. Number 6. Hot Toys Vasquez from the movie Aliens. It's unfortunate Hot Toys released their Aliens line at a time where I wasn't collecting 1.6, which is when they were actually a little more affordable. Their Aliens figures, although flimsy and fragile, are still pretty cool. I do own Drake and Ripley and was fortunate to find those at a decent price, but the Vasquez figure eludes me. She was an awesome character and the figure is immaculate as well. I have a feeling the day will come where I will acquire her through a trade or some other means. I'm keeping my fingers crossed. Number 5. Hot Toys Aliens Power Loader Had Hot Toys released their second version of this as they teased a few years back, I'd probably have it by now. However, much like many other Hot Toys, they've teased it and it never saw the light of day and now I long for the first release. These are still available and hope to make a mad dash and hustle to try to acquire them. These are fantastic pieces and a must have for any Aliens fan. Number four, Bengali from Thundercats. I have a fairly modest Thundercats collection and that's a little odd considering I favor that line over Masters of the Universe. One Thundercat figure I doubt I'll ever find cheap is my all-time favorite 80s figure, Bengali. I long for those days where I traverse the aisles at Frank and Son and scoff at, at the mint and complete ones that were selling at that time for under $100. Now they more than tripled in price in many cases. The frustrating part about Bengali is that I know he's out there, just not at a price I'm prepared to pay. So until we go back to the early 2000s, looks like you won't be joining the magnificent world of toys anytime soon, Bengali. Number three, Alfred's Lone Wolf and Cub. You can't even find Alfred's figures out there anymore, much less that of my all-time favorite graphic novel, Lone Wolf and Cub. I actually held this in my hand nearly two decades ago at the old Los Angeles comic book and sci-fi convention at the Shrine. However, at that time, the price of that figure was way beyond my reach as I had a minimum wage job and too many bills to pay. Sadly, by the time I was able to afford one, they became nearly impossible to find. 
So out of curiosity, I decided to try to find one on eBay and none even popped up. I mean, this is a figure I've lost all hope of ever obtaining and likely will never obtain unless I become a millionaire and talk my way to convincing somebody to sell me theirs. Number two, Shozo Hiram. This is a 1-6 scale figure of Bunta Sugawara. He's one of my all-time favorite Japanese actors. I discovered him in the film series known as the Yakuza Papers, Battles Without Honor and Humanity, which I recommend you check out. I love the films so much that I attempted to sculpt the 1-6 scale head of him, but gave up after not being satisfied with the way it was turning out. I wonder if by any chance a figure had ever been made, so I googled Bunta Sugawara action figure, and sure enough, something popped up. It was some limited edition figure in Japan by a company whose name I don't even remember. I believe one may have been available at Mandarake at the time, but once again, my wallet was a little light at that time. I hope to find one one day if I go to Japan. If not, I may just commission somebody which would be cheaper to make a nice head of him for me. And the number one toy topping my wish list is the Alfrex 7 Samurai set. The Seven Samurai is my all-time favorite film. If you haven't seen it, watch it. You would think I would have owned the action figures of them by now. However, when I realized there was an Alfred set, it was once again at a time where I simply did not have the money for it. In the early 2000s, the lowest I saw the set go for was $1,200, which is not bad at all, and it was fairly available. Nowadays, it's not only difficult to find, it has more than tripled in price. I can only hope that someday I find one at a good price, maybe in the aftermarket or possibly when I visit Japan. Um, this is a set that I will likely never obtain though because of the price. Not only that, I mean, it may be just too rare, too late, and you know, one of those things where I literally probably have to win the lottery to be able to afford it. All right, so that's my top 10 list. Well, this list was actually gonna be a lot longer, um, mainly because there's just, you know, a lot of things that I like. Um, the list is actually shorter because first and foremost, I didn't wanna end up with an odd number, like my top 12 and my, or my top 17 or whatever. And then also I have been able to acquire some of the pieces that I had been wanting for quite some time, but, um, before I get to those, let me get to the ones that I really I'm hoping to get. Um, I probably don't want them as bad as the stuff in my top 10, but it would be good to get them. And first and foremost would be a decompose from the Inhumanoids line. I got the two other big fellows and it would just really be great to get a decompose so that I can have that trio. You just can't have either of those figures and not have all three. It's just kind of weird. It's like, it feels like I'm missing a tooth or something in not having a decompose. Uh, uh, also, you know, I would like to pick up some Ninja Turtles from the late 80s. I do have a nice handful of them, but you know, I really want to pick up some of the ones that I had during my childhood. I would really love to have a few maybe like foot soldiers and, and a few of the other characters and stuff that, that I really enjoyed and you know, the figures that I enjoyed playing with. Um, and then I, I think I've mentioned it several times, you know, I've been uh, pretty excited about seeing people's um, Mighty Crusaders collections and, and so I did have some of those when I was a kid and, and I would really love to kind of be reunited with, with a few of those. I mean, I'd like to have the whole set. I mean, they're, they're not that many, but you know, I, I would really love to have at least a handful of them. And last but not least, Wield Warriors. JC and the Wield Warriors. I remember, God, I, I used to love waking up. Like my mom would literally wake up like at the crack of dawn, like at four in the morning, and then she'd leave the work and I turn on the TV and I would get my bowl of cereal and a lot of times for whatever reason, you know, cartoons like in Humanoids and Centurions and Silverhawks and JC and the Wheel Warriors would go on at like the wee hours of the morning. And I mean, that would just, I just loved my mornings, my weekday mornings when I got to do that. And, and so, you know, I did have a couple of um, the Wheel Warriors as a child and I'm hoping to acquire at least maybe one or two of those vehicles complete. That, that would be great. So today, of all days, which is awesome, uh, I got word that um, my Guardians of the Galaxy Nebula from Hot Toys is coming in. And I'm so excited for that figure. Honestly, 
That's a figure I had been anticipating since the release of the movie. And it took a very long time for her to finally come out. I mean, I even made a pretty good effort at trying to create my own. I did a good job with the head sculpt, making an outfit for her. You know, I would have had to tear up one of my valued figures to basically make the part for her. And I just didn't want to do that. And last but not least, this is one I'm totally excited for that I just didn't think I was going to get. I missed it the first time around. I just, one of those situations, the money and nothing, and the stuff didn't come together, but thankfully the stars aligned, and that's this guy, the Rocket Fire Explosion, Billy Bob Rockley. This is actually from Justin Ishmael, who helped produce the Puglu. So yeah, I had originally missed out on this guy, and he managed, you know, he found like a case, like of 10, a limited amount. And, you know, I was at work at the time, couldn't put in the order or anything, so thankfully my my friend, my good friend, uh, Hackam Figures, you know, he jumped on it, he ordered it for me, I was able to reimburse him uh, when he got it, and I am so excited to have this figure. I mean, if you love animatronics, showbiz, 80s stuff, this is just an amazing figure. It's soft vinyl, I mean, it's got an interchangeable head, couple little accessories here and there. I mean, I just totally love this piece and my son loves this piece too, by the way. So it's kind of like we have joint ownership of it anyway. I mean, I really love this figure and I'm so excited. Thank you, Hackam, for getting them for me. I, I mean, I'm really happy. So with that being said, um, for those of you who follow me on social media, you may have seen the announcement that actually this week, uh, we are now two years old. The Magnificent World of Toys is now two years old and that's great. I mean, I'm really honored and I'm really excited. Um, I'm really happy with my amount of subscribers and everyone who supports me here on the channel and social media. I mean, this has been this has been quite an adventure and and and, and it's fun and it's always good to be able to just kind of you know retreat from life and all the things happening around me and be able to do these videos and and just kind of be here with you for you whenever I can be. Um, and it's great that, you know, the pandemic didn't stop us and, and, you know, we just, we keep rolling and we're gonna keep rolling until, until we just can't. And, uh, you know, basically until I gray, I guess, um, until I just am no longer a kid at heart and I just can't see that happening ever because, I mean, I love toys, I love movies, I love all this stuff and it just brings me a lot of joy and I know, and I know that it brings a lot of you guys joy as well. So. Let's stay positive, ladies and gentlemen. Let's stay safe. Let's get through all of this crap. And, you know, may those who play never great. Thank you all, ladies and gentlemen. This is Roger Daniel for the Magnificent World of Toys. See you soon.